Despite the fact that IOUs and purchasing on credit is nothing new, credit scores are a rather recent invention. And as we all know, they can play a big role in your life's path. Credit scores debuted in the 1950s, and they gained traction in the decades to come. These days, a decent credit score demonstrates your credit worthiness to financial institutions. But what do you do if you're an 18-year-old college student stepping out into the world for the first time? To answer that question, we called in Rod Lipka. Rod is a financial counselor and educator with Lutheran Social Services in Sioux Falls. Rod's here to break down what college kids should be looking for in a credit card and why credit is so important to achieving major milestones. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I haven't been in college for a hot minute. Um, <laughs> so I remember when I, so 20 years, it's my 20th anniversary oh, or a reunion this, this coming weekend actually, but it was like you could get a credit card if you got one, you'd get a juice stop even. Like they were like handing them out like yeah, candy. Oh, yeah. Is it still like that? It's tightened up for a couple of reasons. Um, partly campuses are a little pickier. They want to sell their own credit card. I was, I was the same way. You sign up and get a free t-shirt and there was 10 credit card yeah. companies. So it's tightened up because um, of the colleges and the way they're handling that. It's also tightened up because lenders are trying to be a little pickier in this environment. They aren't interested in lending money and not getting paid back. So credit cards um, for students can be probably a little bit of a tricky situation. Um, what are some of the pitfalls that most of the students fall into? Sure, there's a couple of hurdles. Um, one is credit is this weird thing to try and break into. They want you to have credit before they'll give you credit. So uh, a when it comes, when lenders look at you, you fall into one of three categories. You have good credit, you have bad credit, or you have no credit. No credit and bad credit are the same thing, which is where the average college student falls. They don't have anything. The other thing is they don't have predictable income. You know, maybe they have a summer job, but credit card companies like to be able to check the box and say, here's the W-2 and here's what the person makes. So what should you look for in a credit card for a college student? Sure. First of all, we want to make sure it reports to a credit bureau. There are a couple of credit cards. They don't. They're in the habit of lending money, but they don't report to the credit bureau, so using it would not build credit. Um, we want to avoid an annual fee, um, a low credit limit to start with. You know, I'd rather someone make a mistake with a little bit of money on a $300 credit card than a card that has $3,000 limit. And again, if you're in a position where maybe you do get points for something you want, travel points or something, as long as it's being paid in full, take advantage of those. What about using like a secured card as a stepping stone in? That is usually the best way to start. So a secured credit card, with a regular credit card, I'm just promising I'm gonna pay it back. A secured credit card, I have to give them $300 first, then they send me a card with a $300 limit. And it works like a regular credit card as I make charges, I make regular payments and I get bills. They leave the 300 alone unless I don't pay them. So there's not much risk to them, so they are easier to get. Again, they're typically for people who have no credit or bad credit, so that's often where I'll tell people to start. It's best to apply for a credit card you know you can get, because if you apply and you get turned down, it's gonna ding your score and then make it harder for the next one. Okay. So those with no credit, because I fell into that category for a while, should do something like a secured card. I, I would start, let's go with the low hanging fruit. We just pick the card we're confident we can get, and then as we build credit, okay, now I can get the credit card that gives me the points or whatever it is I'm looking for. Okay. I think it's pretty easy to fall into the trap of every time you go to a store, they offer you a credit card and they say you're like already approved. Um, um, what are the kind of ramifications or pitfalls of accumulating multiple forms of credit too sure. soon? Um, you know, I don't know if we need a credit card from every store. No, I would, I would discourage that. Um, in this case, there's a couple of pitfalls. One, every time I apply for those, it's going to hurt my score. And it's a temporary, and it depends on a few variables. So I've got that, but there is also a risk because now if I have... 10 credit cards or store cards, and there's a $1,000 limit on each. Well, now a lender, and maybe I'm paying it in full, but the lender's looking going, Rod could be $10,000 in debt tomorrow if he right. wanted to. I normally suggest one or two cards, um, just because if I have an expensive purchase, you know, the water pump on the car breaks, I put it on my credit card, I use the other one because it's important to keep the utilization, how much you put on the card low. Who are the people who need to see your credit score, who need your? Sure, the score is generally used by lenders, car, home loans. Uh, the credit report is actually used by tons of people. Landlords will pull it. 
employers use it. Your home and auto insurance is based on your credit report and your score. So it's not just I want to borrow money. This permeates everything we do nowadays. Yeah. Um, and so when you're looking at that and you want to build your credit, what are some of the ways that are the best ways to build credit, sure. particularly starting from it? And we talked about getting a secured card and starting low and making the payments. That's going to be probably step one. No, I, I like, and in some ways I tell people to start with a credit card because if I pay it in full, I don't pay a dime of interest. I can build credit with a car loan, student loans, things like that, but now I have to pay interest. So the, the key is you get it and you pay it in full every month. As long as I pay the minimum, I get the green check mark paid on time and lenders like that. But I talked about the utilization. Um, if I have a $1,000 credit limit, I don't want to go over $250. Once I get over 25% usage on that credit card, it can lower my score. So. Yeah, see, that's interesting because we think of like, particularly as we become more um, you know, better at using them, that mm -hmm. it can be actually advantageous to use it for travel points and put everything oh, on a card to pay it all the way off. And if you're actually doing that, you can have a lot of advantages. But are you saying if that threshold is, to, you get a credit card limit at least higher then? <laughs> yes, and, and there's value in raising the credit card. And I say it's all about someone's comfort level. I was bad with credit when I first started in college. I paid way more in interest. Now I pay it in full, and in fact, what I do is I use my credit card for everything. I get the points. I pay it every week. It's actually, I go in, I look, I see, hey, no weird charges, nothing I don't recognize, and then I pay it in full. It keeps my utilization low, and actually it's easier for me because I don't have to look back and go, I don't remember buying that a month ago and trying yeah. to figure out what it was. That's actually pretty smart. Like, how can students protect themselves from credit card fraud? Exactly. This is a big deal, and... We, like, we hear these stories, there's foreign hackers that get our information. Honestly, most fraud and most identity theft is people we know. You know, does your roommate, oh, I'm gonna, I borrowed his card because I needed a pizza for you know, our friends or something. So we want to keep our information safe and secure, um, and that includes in our house. It's pretty easy, though, if you do, I mean, just paying attention to it is all you really need to do, because if there is a fraudulent activity, credit card companies are built to deal with that with Correct. you. So it's right. not, you're not on the hook necessarily. I mean, you don't have to just absorb it. You should call them. At Correct. least call. If, if it was clearly fraud, they will remove it, and you don't owe the charge or the interest. Um, you do have to report it fairly quickly if I look back and go yeah. three months ago. But no, there, there are a lot of protections with a credit card above and beyond what you'd get with a debit card at a bank. So I actually encourage it when you buy things online, use a, a credit, credit card. A credit card is Sorry. probably better. Thank Sorry. you so much. We learn stuff. It's yeah. not just for kids. Thank you. <laughs>